Hi everyone. So in this video, we'll shed more light on uh, on the issue of convergence of uh, stochastic gradient descent. And uh, remember, the point is uh, is basically uh, motivating uh, stochastic, like basically the providing justification for why stochastic gradient descent uh, is chosen, or or simple extensions of stochastic gradient descent are commonly used uh, in deep neural networks. Uh, especially because it's um, it's a very simple strategy that relies only on the first order derivative. So it can be counterintuitive that such a strategy um, is really the the preferred one uh, with a network with a very large number of parameters. So um, if you consider so in the first video where we uh, introduced stochastic gradient descent, we uh, basically discussed the condition for when SGD will ultimately converge or no. Now let's look mo in more detail at the convergence rate or uh, or how fast does it converge. So if you look at the excess error, right, so this is excess training error and that's basically uh, the value of the cost function minus the uh, uh, minus the optimal value that minimizes that training error. Okay, so the optimal value in terms of fitting to the training data. So there are theoretical results about SGD that provides uh, uh, how that provides um, basically uh, and uh, how the um, uh, provides uh, guarantees on how the excess error will scale with the number of iterations. Right. So we are using here the, this big O notation. It means it scales with. Right, so within a constant, so um, so we have these two results basically that um, it's order one over square root k, right? So it uh, it the excess error is minimized uh, with a speed of square root k for if the co if the cost function is convex and order one over k or linear with the number of iterations uh, for a strongly convex cost. Now let's see what does convex and strongly convex mean and, uh, and how, how practical are these assumptions. So basically convex means that you have, if you draw a line between two points, that line will lie above the curve, right? And, um, and basically the, the good thing about convex functions is that the local minimum is the global minimum. And uh, it's basically you can obtain it by looking for the point where the gradient uh, reaches zero. So a general function would typically, let's say it looks like this, right? So the, a function like this would be convex in certain regions, right? So if I only look at the regions from here to here, then the function is convex. If I only look at the region from here to here, from there to there, right? Then the function is convex, right? So usually these assumptions make sense if we are within the neighborhood, within the local neighborhood of the optimal solution, right? But in general, convexity is not guaranteed at all. And actually in deep learning, because the number of parameters is typically large, so we are typically, uh, like this is a far from real assumption. Right, but it assumes that you will somehow explore quickly the parameter space and then reach a neighborhood, a local neighborhood uh, of the global of the, of the, of a good solution or an optimal solution. Right, and remember, we only need a good enough solution. So within the neighborhood of a good solution, the error is minimized uh, with that speed corresponding to square root k if the cost is convex and uh, linearly if it's strongly convex. Now, what does, so remember, convex could also have a, a flat region could be convex, right? But not strictly convex. And a stronger ass uh, assumption than even strictly convex is strongly convex. Now, uh, I wouldn't get into the details of the formal definition of what's a strongly convex function, but uh, you can think of it like uh, in, in, uh, in most cases, strong convexity is equivalent to just saying that the second derivative is always positive. 
So remember, if I have a line like this, the first derivative is constant and the second derivative is zero. So saying that the second derivative is always positive, it means that there is always curvature. So it doesn't look like a V. There is always curvature. So basically, the function changes at least quadratically, right? So, uh, so it's not linear. It's at least quadratic, okay? So if it is, if the second derivative is always positive, this is similar to the assumption, remember, that the Hessian has always positive uh, eigenvalues or all uh, strictly positive eigenvalues, then SGD will minimize the excess error, the training error, will drop linearly with the number of iterations. Now, there is a fundamental re result in, uh, in statistical estimation, which is given by something called the Cramer rao bound. And what the Cramer rao bound says is that if you look at the generalization error, not the training error, then the generalization error cannot decrease faster than linear with the number of training iterations. And hence, there is a, a strong belief, and it's formally analyzed in this paper right here called the trade-off of large-scale learning, uh, and it was presented in NIPS 2008, that uh, if you converge faster than linear uh, in terms of the training error, then you are overfitted. Right, and the uh, the spirit behind that result comes from the fact that the Cramer Rao bound says that the generalization error cannot decrease faster than linear. So if you are decreasing the training error faster than linear, then then that's dangerous. Then that's a sign that you could be overfit. Now the last thing I want to say, it's very good to have all these discussions about uh, theoretical results for convergence rate and convergence guarantees. But sometimes there are practical concerns that are not reflected in, uh, in the theoretical model or the theoretical analysis. And basically, it turns out that for very large data sets, which is very typical with deep learning, the, the fact that SGD can explore within few epochs or few passes over the large data set can explore uh, uh, quickly and efficiently the parameter space and make rapid initial progress, which is the assumption that we always used uh, for analyzing early stopping or L2 regularization, or even here when we say that the function is, uh, the cost function is convex or strongly convex, that assumption that we are within a local neighborhood of the optimum, that in the first few epochs you can get into a local neighborhood of a good solution, that fact usually outweighs the issue of asymptotic convergence. And remember that at the end of the day, we will typically use some version of early stopping with a patient's value that makes us stop after a certain number of iterations, right? So this navigation effect, rather than the exact convergence rate when you get, rather than the fine tuning, this rapid navigation of the huge parameter space uh, that is efficient is really what uh, what's making SGD in practice uh, a favorable solution. Thank you.